crate sifting doesn't happen anymore. Nobody has like blisters on their fingers from like going to a Brighton record shop and like sifting through like old solo records. It's like, bro, do you know how bigger of a world like Excellent. So, I mean, you've been on the podcast before, so we ask everybody these questions. But the first one is the, the kind of tech question. I mean, it probably, you know, in the past we'd say, oh, the you know, most important piece of equipment of all time. But what, what are you feeling at the moment? What's, what's the go-to? Oh, what do we use the most? Well, you know, our favourite is probably the TM. The, the TG distorted DI yeah. guitar sound. Yeah, that's on like two or three songs because that's a, that's a remake of a Abbey Road channel strip from a desk abbey road and like the beatles used to do and a bunch of other there's like a motown thing as well you just use the preamp to distort a di guitar which is like technically like the purists would be like what are you doing you need to use an amp and needs to evolve or whatever yeah. but like we just went straight into it just a quick they probably were just like i don't know some of them might have Fallen on it in the studio and just gone, whoa, what was that? And then, you put like a 330, like a Gibson 330 through one of them and it's like slightly breaking up. Like that is that kind of yeah, it's nice. Beatles sound. There's more, there's more dynamic to it because if you're playing really softly, it's not distorting. And if you play into it, then it really breaks and, up. Um, is this a piece of hardware or is it a Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a rack. Yeah. It's a rack. And the um, keyboard unit. Oh, uh, JV1080? Yeah, JV1080. Yeah. It's a really, that's kind of... That was the a nice transition. I I bought that during lockdown. Um, after like googling like what keys did Fleetwood Mac use and stuff because I knew they weren't real, but they always sounded semi semi organic, like hybrid organic sort of sounds. And it was it was a few different things. It was like a Korg M1 and a Roland JV 1080. Um, and they were sampled, I believe. They weren't actually synthesized, so they were sampled real instruments to some extent. We so all, yeah, yeah, we also that got, was something so. that we hadn't used on any other record. We'd we'd sort of been look, we'd been trying to get those sounds and never sort of nailed them. And then, so, and we yeah. only used them, right? No, it was the JV and then the CPAE, which, CPA. which is the electric actual uh, baby piano. That's right. So and then we got a, like this. They're kind of so cool. It's like a very good. Oh, it's halfway. the same one that we had in um, when we were making notes. When we were like to blur his face. I we, don't know who that we, is. we wrote. Um, we wrote. We wrote. Sincerity is scary on one of those. Yeah. Um. Also, we got a lot of use out of a filicorda. Filicordia. Filicorda. Filicorda. Filicord. And harmonium and just we were making pads and textures from kind of organic. There's this whole yeah, thing that, like, you know, people say, like, like old school producers are like, crate sifting doesn't happen anymore. Nobody has, like, blisters on their fingers from, like, going to a Brighton record shop and, like, sifting through, like, old solo records. It's like, bro, do you know how bigger of a world, like, the, like, the, the computer holds of, like, all of your soft synths? Like, the, the, you can get so lost in those kind of places and like what's the right keyboard sound like it could take you forever so we just kind of like limited those kind of things it's like harmonium philocordia piano cpae like that's what we're going to use if if you've been in the band for 20 years and you can't do that then it's just all aesthetics isn't it really so this was yeah. just about like and anything that wasn't real if it was from the box or whether it was from a synth Jack had a Dynacord, which is actually a digital echo, but it sounds very analog. And then a, like a Binson and a tape echo. So anything. And a copycat. Yeah. Um, so anything that was digital source, we would run through this analog stage and it really brought everything into the world. And then we ran everything through tape. But as soon as it started to sound like black keysy, like we are using tape, we uh, pulled it back. Yeah, but, most of the drums were sort of sent to tape we set i like to set up tape like a reamp sort of line in the studio so i don't need to cut to it but i'll send stuff out and yeah back in i mean here's like a space echo stem of a vocal fancy new apartment so there's a central park you see i mean it just sounds like a vocal but in context against a non-tape echo we were like you know that's 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 jamie our keyboard player singing 
it was very hi-fi and then you add this in it's like it's a bit broken so it fucked um it's just about texture and warmth you know we were that's matty's space echo fancy new apartment so you can really hear that we were against that new york you know yeah and are you enjoying any particular plugins at the moment, George? Or have you kind of put all that kind of on hold? In? Plugins are lame, bro. <laughs> um, useful, though. No? Yeah, but I've useful got, I've... stuff is annoying. It's like my phone's useful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, annoying. I mean, I, there's a surplus of like, I'm getting quite into like analog uh, channel strip emulations that have like the random voltage sort of selector where you flick through different channels that have been modeled from a desk and you will actually hear, like you can get, there's like a plug-in lines focus right one, which has a really nice random channel selector. So it's like anything that creates imperfection or enhances imperfection for me is what I'm into now, or like hyper creative plugins like sort of sequenced effects and stuff yeah yeah things that like really mash anything with. that creates randomizing is also really difficult to to find good stuff Ooh. 